it's beautiful when people feel like they can talk about things and not be judged. You know, there's, it's this self-concept, this image that believes it's this human being and it's it's very volatile mask. You know, the mask is always teetering and you work your whole life to try to prop it up and to make the mask solid and strong and like you're a decent, law-abiding, good human being and it's this mask and then little by little things keep poking, poking holes in it and trying to shatter it as you go through your life and you're still trying to uphold it and it's just good to get more and more to that state of mind where you can start to see the falsity of the mask because it takes so much energy to keep the mask up and when you can just relax and let yourself be who you are and feel all that love pouring through you then it's that warm kind of cozy feeling of love and connectedness that's that is so real and yet you know it's like when you, people get glimpses and taste of it then it's almost torture to think of not being in it and then pressuring yourself to try to do something to get out of this other thing it just gets into a, a very difficult uh, struggle which there are a range of colored puppies that it's like being dragged behind a foraging camel for three weeks <laughs> <laughs> yeah good old puppies <laughs> yeah It's like children are so beautiful to be around. You know, should just be a child with them. It's just, yeah. you know, it's just delightful. They know how to do it so beautifully. Yeah. That's where I first learned all my opening up. It's like, I thought I had all these, the right ideas with enlightenment and everything, and then I got to lead these teens in this, like, for two years in religious science. And uh, we would do all these camps together and do all these weekends and sharing. And I didn't have a clue about what open was until I <laughs> spent time with them and they're like hugging you and doing all these A's and B's and angel washes and sharing to you. And I was like, whoa, I better <laughs> catch up to them. <laughs> so then, for two years it was like all this opening and sharing. They're just so expressive, they, don't, they can't hold back. They didn't buy into it. No. You can't be fake around them, you like see through it in a second. The animals as well, you know, they're so innocent. But they can't, they can't kill a lot of people. Very calculating. <laughs> I bet you love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, we love it. That's not what you tell me last Yeah, I think that's, the, 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 that's a great symbol of breaking the mind out of its conditioning and patterns. Because children can be very spontaneous, and we certainly, I'm, I feel so blessed by the cats that we've had at, the, at our peace house, because it's like, just the look in their eyes as if there's nothing, like the Beatles song, there's nothing to get huff about. It's like that's just the state of looking into their eyes and they're just around reminding, reminding of that. And, and the thing about <clears throat> spirituality is it's, it's, the temptation is, is to try to fit the spirituality into the same old boxes, you know, uh, even with, with things like gatherings or materials, you know, or anything, you know, it can be just like transferring the same thought patterns that you had with your family over to church or to spirituality. So it's like you're, you're putting it in a box and you're expecting it to function that way. When true spirituality is the undoing of everything, you think you know all your expectations and, and uh, I've loved that about travel, about animals and um, meeting children and uh, just the wisdom that comes pouring through and you know when you when you realize that things are just not what they seem nothing is as it seems <laughs>